This video is about the installation of the Stuart Aquatron A4000 water still. The first thing that needs to be checked when unpackaging the, uh, the unit is to check that all the bits are actually in the box. Starting with the hose kit which consists of a 16mm hose, 8mm hose and two tie wraps. Each one of these is one metre long. We've got the condenser, you've got the uh, reservoir water level sensor which is this one, you've got the heater, you've got the mounting wall bracket, you've got the boiler level control complete with rotor flow stopcock and also the boiler coupling, you've got the output hose assembly and you've got the funnel, you've also got the unit itself which has got the mini valve assembly and the con water connector on there, it has got the cables for the mains electrical connector and it has got the front, uh, the front flexi lid. To remove the fascia of the, uh, the unit basically we lift up and pull out and the fascia can be removed. Inside when you receive your unit you will see lots of packaging inside that needs to be taken out very carefully so as not to break any of the glass, the thermostat etc. Once the packaging has been removed you will see we have retaining springs around the boiler okay, and we have a tie. This tie needs to be snipped okay, when setting it up. So the first thing you want to do is snip that. I won't do it for the purpose of this demonstration. On the boiler itself we have a O-ring and we have a uh, sealing ring here. Um, just make sure they are fitted before we uh, begin to assemble the condenser. And at the back we have the water flow control, again which we will uh, be assembling shortly. The next thing to do is to remove the lid, which consists of six countersunk screws. When they're removed, the lid just is removed like so. And there are six screws for the side panel. Again, these are removed and the side panel can be removed. We've also got the thermostat glass tube which runs inside the boiler and inside there we have the thermostat itself. Okay, the next thing to do is to fit the actual condenser itself. What we need to do is to take our 1 metre of 8mm hose and we connect that to the bottom connection of the condenser. This is where the distillate will actually leave the condenser itself. The tubing is just pushed on to the bottom connector. Like Next so. thing we do is from the top we place it in the top, the tubing in the top of the unit and like so. The condenser is then fitted on top of the boiler itself. When it's fitted you will feel some resistance from the sealing ring at the top. The best thing to do is to just push it down very slightly until we have approximately three quarters of an inch gap between the condenser and the boiler and you've got a good seal on the inside. The ring at the bottom is a stabilising ring, prevents any movement and prevents the glass uh, of the condenser actually uh, breaking. The distillate output should be facing the front. The two other connections on the back should be parallel. Again, we will look at that in a second. If the unit is to be wall mounted, then the distillate output tube can be fitted through the hole at the bottom, which is there. If the unit is to be bench mounted, then the tubing can be fed from the inside to out through either of the two small holes. For this demonstration I will put it into the furthest of the three holes. The next thing to do is to fit our boiler control. Again the boiler control is fitted with our uh, ro rotor flow stopcock which should be fully closed. Like so. Also our boiler coupling we need to remove the split nut, 
the coupling itself and we will leave the rubber insert and the split nut on the boiler control. We will then place the 16mm tubing connected to the 16mm spigot. We will put that in a beaker of hot water. This will make the 16mm tubing a bit more supple and a bit safer when we place it onto our boiler level control. Okay, our 16mm tubing is placed in a beaker of hot water for approximately 20 seconds. Once the 16mm tubing has been in the water for approximately 20 seconds, it can be taken out and fed through the largest of the three holes inside of the unit. Once it's through, it can be pushed through like so. And it needs to extend into the unit by approximately one foot. Okay, once the pipe is been pushed through, we can then connect it to the other side of our 16mm earth spigot. Again, this junction here needs to be tie wrapped. The thing to do is to take okay. our split nut, which is part of our boiler coupling, and we place that onto our boiler connector itself. We then put the coupling itself onto the boiler, like so. The next, the easiest thing to do then is we need to get this rubber um, sleeving inside the boiler connection itself. So again, it's a bit fiddly, so we need to pull it back again and do it with two split nuts. Next thing to do is so. to connect our funnel into our boiler level control. We just ease the black cap off slightly, press that in and we tighten up. Like so. We then take our output um, assembly hose, we then connect one end to the top of our condenser. and the other end to our boiler level control. Just making sure that the actual black rubber seal is actually inside the connector. The next thing to do is to connect our water flow level sensor. Again, which is at the back. And we connect that to the bottom of the condenser. Now when you connect the, the water flow sensor to the bottom of the condenser, you will see where we have kinks in the pipe. The best thing to do is to put your hand on top of the condenser and just slightly rotate it until the kinks are actually out of the pipe itself. The next thing to do is to place our heater inside the boiler. We have a black cap on the end of the boiler. We take that off and we fit it to our heater. Heater is fed through like so. Now here we've got a seal which is a bit tight but we need to get that all the way up to the edge. And the easiest way to do this is to leave it about an inch from the top and then feed our gasket on our seal 
like so. Then from the side, we place our heater inside our boiler, like so, and we then start to turn the black cap. On the end of the boiler is the cutout, and you can see that the heater is, is gently touching the, uh, the end of the nozzle there, supporting it above the base. Next thing to do is to get our cables for our heater. The cables are then threaded through the hole by the earth point, like so, and connected to the connectors on the terminal here. It's obvious which one goes to what, you've got blue and brown. Our side panel can then be connected back up. We're using the six screws. For the purpose of this demonstration, I will only put two screws in. Our lid can also be fitted at this stage. Again, I will just put one screw in just to hold it. Okay, our Mains water um, input can now be connected to the, the mini valve assembly here and our mains electric can be connected up via the spur. Obviously th this job needs to be completed by a qualified electrician. Once them two things are done we can then fit our reservoir level sensor. This is done by just connecting it onto the connector like so this can then be put into the reservoir. The last thing to do is obviously get your um, aquatron up and running, make sure there's no leaks, everything is working correctly. And the final thing is to put our Perspex fascia on. Again, that is just lift it up and drop down like so. Okay. 